In Chinatown, a little girl was celebrating her birthday with her mother and some of her mother's friends. Even though she looks happy, Daphne still misses her father. Sadly, she never met her father. That's why she always asked her mother to tell about their past, when they were still with Daphne's father. Then Libby, Daphne's mother, tells her about meeting with a guy in Morocco. At that time, young Libby was wandering in a desert and she suddenly mired and fell. But suddenly, a man swiftly caught her and saved her. Since then, Libby fell in love with the man at first sight, and they married in Morocco. The man's name is Henry, and he decides to take Libby to England. In fact, Henry was the only child of the royal family. But this made Libby not well received by this family. The situation got worse because of the death of Henry's father. Shortly thereafter, it finally forced Henry to replace his father's position, and he began to be preoccupied with royal affairs. But unfortunately, Libby, who only wanted to have an official marriage in England, was suddenly expelled by a member of the royal family. A man named Alistair deliberately sent Libby home to her place of origin. He even made a fake letter which seemed to confirm that Libby was uncomfortable being there and wanted to part with Henry. Sadly, Henry, who was forced to part with Libby, did not know that his lover was pregnant. In fact, until their daughter was born, Henry did not know it. Long story short, Daphne has grown into a beautiful teenager and she started working with her mother to become a waitress. But in the midst of her busy life, Daphne is still curious about her biological father. She began to frequently seek information about her father. Then Daphne was desperate to go to London to meet her father and let go of her longing. Arriving in London, Daphne stopped at a hotel, and then she met a man named Ian Wallace. Even though it was the first time they met, the two of them were already close. Moreover, Ian is a musician, just like Libby. At that place, Daphne saw the news on TV about her father. Currently, Henry, who served as Lord Dashwood, was exploring politics. His decision to run for prime minister has attracted the attention of many people, including his decision to marry a widow with one daughter. Seeing the news about Henry on TV, Daphne felt discouraged and even wanted to go home and let her father continue to live with his new family. But the urge for a very big longing has actually taken Daphne farther and farther. Finally, she arrived at Dashwood's residence. It was ridiculous that Daphne, who snuck into the mansion, instead was caught by Henry and Daphne is mistaken for paparazzi. However, the bad prejudice immediately disappears when the girl shows a photo of young Henry along with a birth certificate, which clearly confirms that Daphne is Henry and Libby's biological daughter. Seeing this, Glynis, Henry's fiancée, did not like Daphne's presence. Likewise with Clarissa, Glynis' daughter. They even asked Henry to kick out Daphne from their place. However, unexpectedly, Jocelyn Dashwood, Henry's mother, was actually amazed by the presence of her granddaughter. Jocelyn, who had always wanted to have a grandchild, allowed Daphne to live temporarily in the mansion. Feeling lied to, Henry then contacted Libby to ask for clarity regarding her daughter. But from here, it slowly began to be revealed that Libby's leaving 17 years ago was due to an order from the advisor at the Dashwood residence. Because of that too, Libby asked Henry to immediately return Daphne. This was so Daphne wouldn't feel what Libby used to feel, being kicked out of the family. On her first night, Daphne was still amazed by her new life at the Dashwood residence. Then she went to Henry's workplace. There, Henry invited Daphne to come to a fashion show, which will be held soon. At the event, Clarissa will be introduced to the public as Henry's adopted daughter, when he later marries Glynis. Hearing the invitation, Daphne was very happy and excited because she had never attended a fashion show before. She even gave Henry her childhood album with Libby. Meanwhile, Clarissa, who had overheard the conversation between Henry and Daphne, then ordered Daphne to wear a casual suit when attending the fashion show event. This was so that Daphne would not attract the attention of the visitors, while she could appear attractive in public, according to her plan. On the day of the fashion show, Daphne is left behind by Henry and the others. As a result, like it or not, this girl had to come to the event herself. Ridiculously, Daphne, who didn't know the entrance to the event, suddenly appeared from behind the curtain and immediately attracted the attention of all the audiences there, including Henry and the judges. But who would have thought Daphne, who was already on the catwalk, finally appeared like a fashion show participant? She was the only one wearing a casual outfit, so she immediately caught everyone's attention. Not only that, Daphne also got a perfect score from the judges and received lots of compliments from the visitors. After that, Daphne saw a cute dog belonging to Princess Charlotte and she immediately played with the dog. Uniquely, the dog was usually always barking at new people, but this time it was tame in Daphne's arms. This made Princess Charlotte amazed and she did not hesitate to invite Daphne to a summer event in the kingdom. Since then, Daphne's presence in the Dashwood residence has clearly provoked great hatred from Glynis, Alistair, and Clarissa. Glynis' daughter even provoked Daphne to immediately leave the Dashwood residence. Clarissa judged that Daphne was not the right girl to be part of the Dashwood family. Then Daphne conveyed this to Jocelyn. However, as a grandmother of course, Jocelyn is more defending her own granddaughter. 
Jocelyn revealed that all this time Alistair, Glynis's father, has been eyeing a position in government for a long time. He even did this when Henry's father was still alive. Jocelyn also said that Alistair was very ambitious about his social status. For that reason, he was willing to do anything so Glynis could marry Henry. It didn't stop there. Jocelyn also reminded Daphne to be stronger in living life in the Dashwood family. Because after all, there will be many parties who want to drop Daphne. Later, at a meeting of nobles, Daphne, who appeared after Glynis and Clarissa, caught the attention of everyone there. She even became the spotlight of journalists because of her beauty and charisma. Then there was a young man who asked Daphne to dance, he was Armistead, who also came from a noble family. However, the girl was more interested in the music there. What's more, the person playing the music was Ian, the guy who had captured Daphne's heart all along. And bullying does not only apply to the lower classes. As it turned out, this also happened among the British nobility, as Clarissa and her friends were currently doing. The twin princess, Phil and Peach, are the hosts of this event and are teased by Clarissa. She said that the event was very quiet and boring. Hearing Clarissa's words, Daphne felt sorry for the twins, so he asked Ian to sing a more energetic song. Surprisingly, Daphne can make a lonely and boring event become lively. Everyone was now dancing, following the songs by Ian and the band. The next day, Henry was going to go to Parliament and he found a motorbike parked in his yard. And as it turned out, it was Ian's motorcycle. They then got to know each other and Ian said that he wanted to take Daphne for a walk. Hearing this, Henry suddenly felt worried about his daughter. In fact, he even contacted Libby just to tell her about Daphne who hung out with Ian. Henry seemed to confirm that he was starting to love his biological daughter. On another day, the Dashwoods and other notables gathered to see a rowing competition being held by the royal court. At that place, Daphne again met Ian who worked as a parking attendant at the valet for noble families. Armistead also came to the event, but unexpectedly, he, who had been infatuated by Daphne from the start, boldly stroked her and was about to kiss her. But again, unexpected things happened. Daphne, who was in the spotlight, deliberately pushed Armistead so that he fell into the river and this action clearly made the journalists highlight the girl. While Henry, who didn't want his daughter to be in the spotlight of the media, immediately pulled Daphne and fled using Ian's motorbike. From here, it can be seen that Henry's affection for Daphne began to appear. Even Henry felt like he was back in his youth when he was still with Libby. However, they could not hide from the journalists. Because in front of the Dashwood residence, there were already many reporters. Henry, who still didn't want to meet with reporters, just walked away and followed Daphne's advice to climb over the fence of the house. Feeling returning to his youth which was full of adventures, Henry acted like a rock star by wearing the tight clothes in his room. Glynis, who caught Henry, was completely ignored by him because he was still preoccupied with his own business. Some events experienced by Henry recently have an impact on his candidacy as Prime Minister. He even had to lose 15 poll points since the chaos appeared in his life. The agenda that had been planned before had to fail due to the controversy that he had been through. In the end, it made Henry force Daphne to change her dress and attitude. Since then, Daphne, who wanted to make Henry happy, began to change her attitude and appearance. Not only that, Daphne rejects Ian's invitation to a concert, and she prefers to come to the Queen of England's garden party. At other times, Jocelyn, who loves Daphne so much, suddenly gives her a tiara. Jocelyn says that she also used the tiara when she was introduced, and this time she wanted Daphne to wear it while doing an introduction to the British nobles. At the Dashwood family event, Daphne looked elegant with a tiara on her head and immediately became the spotlight of journalists. But it was different from Clarissa. She who had been eyeing the tire all this time was clearly very angry because Jocelyn seemed to love Daphne more instead of her. On the other hand, Daphne's change in attitude and appearance had irritated Ian. Even now, he was cold to Daphne. Meanwhile, on the other hand, something unexpected happened. Jocelyn, who really loves Daphne, invited Libby to the event. Libby's arrival obviously made Daphne happy. In addition, Henry, who bears the title of Lord of Dashwood, cannot hide his joy when dancing with Libby. Of course, this made Alistair and Glynis very angry. Then they started talking about their plan to get Daphne out of there, just like what Alistair had done with Libby a long time ago. But unexpectedly, their conversation was actually heard by Daphne, who suddenly didn't accept their attitude. Not wanting Daphne to ruin their event that night, Glynis immediately grabbed the girl and locked her in a room alone. While on the dance floor, the guests are now asked to do the ancient tradition, where father and daughter have to dance together. Henry couldn't find Daphne, so he finally has to dance with Clarissa. Meanwhile, Libby, who is worried about her daughter, is finally able to find Daphne. She immediately took Daphne out of the room. Then Daphne returned to the party and she found her father dancing with Clarissa. With great disappointment, Daphne then gave the tiara to Clarissa and left. Not wanting to lose his daughter, Henry tried to explain what actually happened. But these efforts not one bit made Daphne move. She had been waiting for the moment to dance with her father, 
and now she was already disappointed. Daphne said that all this time she always missed her father's presence in her life. With a sense of disappointment, finally Daphne and Libby left the Dashwood residence and returned to moving on with their lives. Since then, Henry often looks gloomy as if he loses part of his life. It also seems to have attracted Jocelyn's attention. She wisely gave advice to Henry and suggested to him to be mature by making his choices and not to sacrifice his feelings. Surprisingly, the advice from his mother was enough to make an impression and make Henry more courageous in determining his steps. This was shown by Henry before Parliament by declaring that he chose to withdraw from the nomination for Prime Minister. Without a doubt, Henry emphasized that there is a thing far more important than his political career that is his family. Henry's decision to withdraw from the nomination had clearly sparked Alistair's anger. The man even expressed his emotions by revealing his decision to kick out Libby at that time. Even worse, Alistair kicks Libby out because at that time he found out that she was pregnant. Alistair did this so that Henry's reputation would not fall and he could personally get a good position in the parliament. Hearing this confession, Henry finally punched Alistair which immediately made everyone there very shocked. As if he didn't care about his political career and his future with Glynis anymore, Henry immediately left the place. Daphne was still grieving over the parting with her father, and she looked gloomy. The girl's heart was also broken when the wedding party headed to the dance between father and daughter. She didn't have a father figure, could only look enviously at the guests. Meanwhile, Libby, who was on duty as a wedding singer, couldn't believe what she was seeing. Surprisingly, Henry, who was supposed to be in London, was present at the event. Henry's arrival immediately made Daphne very happy. With teary eyes, Henry asked Daphne to dance. This certainly made Libby feel touched and happy. Not only that, Henry also gave Daphne another surprise. Apparently, Henry did not come alone. He also brought Ian with him to meet Daphne. Later, Daphne dances with Ian. Meanwhile, Henry is dancing with Libby. At the end of the story, it is shown that Clarissa is married to Armistead. Meanwhile, Glynis has also married a wealthy nobleman and is the stepmother of twin princesses. However, Alistair, who has always had the ambition to sit in Parliament, now he is working as a tour guide. Meanwhile, Daphne, who initially wanted to study at New York University, was instead accepted to study at Oxford University. It was a pride she had never imagined before. While Henry and Libby finally can reminisce about their past, they even returned to hold their wedding for the second time in Morocco. Finally, the Dashwood family found perfect happiness.